Hi, welcome to another Robot tutorial video. Hi, it's Rob Snow at Robot uh, Illustration again. A uh, client asked me recently if it's possible to do a template setup for her in Illustrator and from that uh, have them change all the images and text. Now, it could be quite difficult if you did it all by hand, so I did some research and try to find a way of actually using what's known as data set inclusion inside Illustrator. And this tutorial is just basically how I did it and showing how useful Illustrator is to actually do a multiple set uh, collection of uh, templates inside Illustrator. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to the tutorial. What we're going to do today is to show you how to use data set implementation into an Illustrator template. So you can basically make several different documents from the same layout just by adding new variables, which will change, for instance, the text, the pictures, the visibility, etc. I'll also add an extra feature, which uh, I did a little bit of research on, which is to know how to colorize certain parts of the actual uh, document as well. So what we're going to do is get started. I've decided to do it in three sections, which is basically the setup, tell you what you need, uh, how I've done it basically. Uh, the second section will be how uh, to create the document and to then implement the data sheet into it. And the third one will be to show you how to do the colorization and then to do the export uh, into whatever format you want. So we're going to get started. Uh, basically the first thing we need to do is actually to create all the files I'm quite lucky I've got a uh, dual screen here so I'll be popping backwards and forwards for the two different screens just to show you because I'm using all the different space available so I can actually uh, make this work for a tutorial but anyway what you'll notice on my desktop is I've got a folder I've called it dataset illustrator and inside that folder I've got some things set up uh, now I'm making my life easier you can do it however you want I'm just trying to make my life easier and I'll show you how it's all done okay now we've got the illustrator template which is here okay we have uh, uh, the illustrator data set template which is here I'm using numbers you can use whatever uh, spreadsheet uh, application you can use and I will show you later on actually we will need to use Google Sheets at some point so we're going to look at that in a minute but I'm using numbers for the main uh, data set and also I've basically created a series of folders for the images you'll notice here I've got a series of images for the project I've got some variation images and I'll show you how that works in a minute and I've also got some logos which I'm going to show how to do something nice with. Uh, these are in Illustrator formats because what I'm going to do is put them in an Illustrator file and then colorize them, show you how you can colorize them. Okay. Finally, there's a folder here called Scripts. And these are the things that make it all the magic happen. So you need to definitely get these. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to, where to get those now. Okay. Go to Safari. Right. I'm not gonna. Oh, there's my uh, Google Sheets ready. Uh, this is one I did earlier. This is uh, the blank one, which I'm going to show you how to do. Now I'm going to give credits to where credits due. I did a lot of this research based on this video, so I'll give you a link in the description. Okay, it's very interesting, but I'm going to go a little bit further than the one this does. And also, I read this article on LinkedIn, which shows you how to do all the colorization. Now this is done by somebody who's obviously trying to show you how to do it technically and I'm not very technically minded so I got a little bit confused and one reason I'm doing this video is so for people who don't know how to do database stuff and all this kind of stuff I've, I'm going to show you the easy way of taking all this information he's put into this uh, article and colorize some of your actual work. That said we need to have these three scripts. One, I'll give the links in the, uh, in the uh, details below but basically this is the first one this is uh, the most important one uh, what you can do is you can, you want to switch this over to raw or you can just literally select it all 
to put into grow it's a lot easier okay select all copy that then you just have to go into a text program I'm going to use text edit new document and I'm going to change the format to plain text because it will strip out all the coding and then you just paste it in okay and there it is just make sure there's no extra coding because uh, I did get some errors uh, for instance it's got to start here like this okay and then make sure there's no stuff at the end as well so it's just the pure script that we've got okay now you just save that out so I'm going to save it to the desktop because I've already got it saved I showed you I'm just going to show you how it's done now but basically I'm, I'm going to call it what it is which is uh, the script importer file that's, that's not what it's actually called uh, I'll show you what it's called it's called variable importer okay but I'm just going to put it on the desktop variable importer and we need to give it the JSX file extension okay like so now this is where it gets it it's got to be in UTX8 UTF8 Unicode format as well okay now sometimes especially on my Mac it puts text on it even though you put all this on so it doesn't do it I'm just going to check save and let's just look at my desktop no it's actually saved it properly this time okay now you need to make sure it hasn't got any other extensions on the end of it it's got to actually have JSX on the end of it okay I'm going to delete that one because I've already got it what you need to do is obviously do the same with the other scripts which is here for the actual recoloring option and this little script here which is actually creating some of the actual elements you need for the recoloring uh, aspect as well okay so that's all the things you need I'm going to close all the ones I don't need to look at at the moment because basically I've got it all set up so I've got a blank spare uh, spreadsheet in uh, Google Documents uh, sheets and I also got the one that uh, we had during the test I did yesterday so I might re refer back to that one so I'll keep it open okay so I'm going to just hide that for a minute what I want to show you is how I'm going to set this up this is a little sketch I did in Photoshop just as it's nice to plan things out so I basically planned out and it's not something I'm going to use it's just something I'm going to use to show you how to do all the different aspects okay so what I'm going to do is just make You'll see I've got a kind of a border there. This means the thing in the background, this area here, or this area here, will be a colour. Okay. Now, inside that will be a block which will be white, and it'll have certain features like the title, the series number, because I've done eight series of these panel behaviour, the image, the date I created it, the name of the animal that's in the picture because they all obviously involve animals the, the title of the piece the description of I had which I obviously distribute through the selling uh, channels that I do uh, three variations because I do it in three different versions which is the title version the wordless version and the coloured version I'm going to have those there and some of them actually don't have the three variations so I'm going to show you how the, one of them can hide okay and where you can buy them now this can change because obviously they don't sell them on different places but because this is a test I'll show you how some of them can stay visible and some of them disappear depending on which animal will be appearing in the picture okay then I'm just going to have something at the bottom for my logo now these areas here will be in vector as well and depending on the colour that appears in the background these may need to be changed colour because uh, my logo is white for instance uh, you may find the white doesn't work against the light color the light the color I'm going to be using in the background will be based on the you know remember I said one of the variations is a colored one so basically this color will be matching that color so it'll look nice and complementary okay now some of these things won't change and some of them will change like uh, that won't change because it's always the same but the, that will change the actual date creator will change the name of the animal will change the image will change the title of the piece and the description will change now here, some of these will be visible, but the pictures will also change regard, according to which main image is there. And as I said, the, where to buy 
these will either be on or off and I will see if I can try to show you how to colorize them as well because all the actual um, all the actual logos are done in white and if you remember I'm going to have this background white so that's the plan so we're going to move on to the next stage okay now I'm in Illustrator I'm going to prepare the document this is a, a document I've created and uh, basically named it data set template uh, it doesn't matter what color value you're in uh, what I'm going to do is uh, this is an A4 you can do whatever size you want but I'm just using an A4 as an example and maybe a leaflet you want to hand out to people at a gallery or something like that so I just set it up as an A4 and also you'll notice on this side I always tend to do an additional uh, layer called guides because obviously you can grab guides and pull them down and things like this uh, I usually have them on the thing because if you hide certain layers they, the guides disappear and you want them there all the time so once I'm ready and understand how, where the guides need to be I then lock the layer but it's just something I do uh, you don't have to do that but I've got a layer called uh, artworks which is where all the artwork features will be and I was, I'm going to do another thing which I tested yesterday which the original video didn't have on the image which is I created a clipping path uh, for the image just in case what you'll notice though is if you look at all my images images animals these are all basically 1000 by 1000 they're all exactly the same but you may have some images which are slightly variant and but you want to not them have them take over the entire document so if as long as the main area of the image is in the area you want inside your clipping path it'll work just fine i did a test and it works so i'm going to add a clipping path even though it won't affect my artwork in any way okay so what i'm going to do is create this document but because of the ease of actually doing it it's going to take a while for me to actually do it live so i'm going to do a speed render version of it so you can just quickly watch what i'm doing and uh, we'll get back to the actual process of what's next in the aftermath of uh, creating the document okay so this is the final artwork that we're going to be using uh, my template now it doesn't matter what's in there because we can change it all as I said so I'm just going to go through quickly you'll notice we have quite a lot of different things listed up here and I'm going to show you how to change those in the next section setting up the actual data sheets okay but I'm just going to go through this tell you what's going to happen okay this is the background color this will be whatever this one is you see this color here it's going to change to that we're going to have it all set up so when you do that it will work okay this is the box which is going to stay white no reason to change that title that's not going to change so that's okay then we've got a border around the picture which we could possibly change the color off or even remove on certain ones if you want we've got the picture which will change we've got the actual series number so this is from Animal behavior one and it's also the date created the, these two parts will stay the same the date will change and also the name of the animal that's featured obviously it's a mole at the moment this is the this is a little border thing that I put in just to make uh, the design look a little bit more wholesome. Uh, it can be uh, changed the colour of and it can also basically be uh, made visible if you want as well. This is the title. Obviously what I've done, if you notice in the quick render version, I checked to see which is the longest name we have. So I made the actual size of the font. Uh, equal to the longest version we will have so it doesn't go off the page because you can't actually change the size of things or things like that so it's important to set the actual design up to show you the largest version that will be available of any of the different things like time name everything okay so this is a um, text box which has some information in it. It's just Laura Mipson at the moment, but it will have the details about the actual picture, just something I add to the pictures when I'm putting them online. 
these are the three different variations you can get and as I said some of them only have two so one of them is going to disappear now I've put them in order so I know these two exist on all of them and this one will disappear so these two elements will have to disappear on the ones that don't have uh, versions of wordless okay this will stay the same uh, these are all the different places where you can buy them five different stores and I may change those to this color as well just to complement everything okay or I could change it to a different color I could actually I'm changing them all to different colors okay now inside the gray area is my logo and you can see at the moment it doesn't look very nice blue against the gray so what I could do is actually make this so it changes color as well to complement the actual color this color okay I know the blue and the red won't work so and also we can change the color of this I could change the actual text inside it as well but because it's my website it won't change so what I'd probably do is just have this change to a color that complements this color as well okay so that's how it's going to work and we're going to do that in the next section okay so we're going to move on now and actually show you the next part which is to put the actual data into the spreadsheet here is the template now all the things are in there and also you'll notice whilst I've been messing around I've actually titled everything you'll notice that uh, I do all my titles in lowercase and also certain titles will have underscore which is quite important because it's way, the way that the thing reads the information okay so what we're going to do is uh, put this into the actual spreadsheet I'm flipping over to the new other screen here's the spreadsheet it's important to understand that all these things you need uh, to have appear here need to correlate to these uh, some of them will have to have symbols in front of them to relate to whether it's an image link or whether it's a whether it's a visibility issue or something like that so but I'm going to go down this list and I'm going to put in the ones that I think are necessary to be variables to have things happen to them okay so we're going to start off with series number and the next one the next one will be uh, date next one will be animal next one will be main image now this is where you need to have a symbol so for anything that's a linked symbol you need to use the at symbol and then put main image after that we have uh, image title and we have description You remember that some of the ones I've actually stated before we're going to colorize or make uh, some changes there we're going to do that in a different spreadsheet so don't worry about that at the time mine seems to auto correct everything into capitals for some strange reason anyway then we're going to put image for var oops that needs to have a symbol one okay now whilst I was doing this I realized I can't make these invisible so we need to get rid of these columns that's gonna be var 2 get rid of that column. that's var 3 that's the three small images underneath okay so we've got the four images I'll move here that's going to be needed to delete so after that we have the logos which are either going to be on or off and to use the visibility thing you just need a hashtag and then you put logo one if that's what it's called so what I'm going to do is just literally copy that part and put two three 
three, oops, three, four, five. Okay, and that's basically it for the actual things that are going to just be changed. We're going to do some color changes later, but that's a different spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is uh, import all this. I'm going to delete this column because we don't need it. And so what I'm going to do is basically populate this with all the necessary information and then come back to you to show you what I've done. And then we can move on to actually showing you then how to bring it into Illustrator. So this is the actual populated uh, spreadsheet. What you'll notice is all the things are across the bottom top there. This is going to have to be deleted, like I said, because we can't do that. So I'm going to just delete those quickly. OK, and we've got an extra one here, which I forgot to put in last time, OK, which is the title for the variable three which is underneath the picture which is going to disappear okay so what we've got here is the different series numbers uh, the dates I created them the, the, the animals that's included in the picture uh, the link to the actual picture the main picture the name of the title of the artwork a brief description about the picture the link to the different smaller versions underneath and then there's a series of boxes here with crosses and blanks inside these are for the different things that need to be either visible or not visible now that doesn't need to be there because we can't do that okay so we've got the title and we've got the logo so if it's got a cross in it it's going to be visible if it's got a space it's not going to be visible that's basically our spreadsheet set up as it should be. Okay, what I'm going to do is quickly save that. And now what we need to do is just export that out to a S CSV file. CSV file. Make sure it's Unicode UTF-8. That's all you need to do on that. Press Next. Now I'm going to go over the one I've already been playing with, so it's going to say Replace, but you'll just save it where you want to. Okay, and that's done. OK, so what we've got to do now inside Illustrator is to show you how to bring all that information in. And that's the way you do it is via one of those scripts I told you about, which is basically variable importer. OK, if I do that, this window will appear. <coughs> what we need to do is just choose the data file we created. This is the spreadsheet. This is the CSV file we created. So I'm just going to choose that one and press open. And when it works and you don't get any error message, you'll notice that all the different things you've mentioned on your spreadsheet appear as variable names down the side. OK, now they're either going to be text, which is going to be replaced, an image that's going to be replaced, or it's going to dis uh, distinguish whether it's going to be visible or not. OK, so once you've done that, you can then go to the next option, which is the options. All we need to do here is just basically sign the name, what you're going to save it out as. So I'm going to call it uh, Animal Behavior, which is what my series is called. And I'm going to set a underscore, and then I'm going to go the uh, image title. OK, you can choose those as well if you want, but I'm going to save them as that. You can actually test this to show you that basically it's got it correct. Uh, that's not just panda, that's because it's all one word, it's on the next line. Okay, so that's correct. And then what we do now is press OK, and then just finally we just need to choose the path for the images, which is basically the one I'm in, which is data set, but if you're not, you just have to find it and press open. And you can show log here, it's a, it basically says if you've got any missing files, and it shows you the list of all the files that it's found, which is correct. Okay. So you press OK there, and it says there, and everything's correct to go. OK, press that. That's just telling me that I've already got it in my list because I've been uh, doing a test and everything. So I can press OK. If, if it's the first time you do it, it won't have a test listed. So 
what we do is then just go through that and press OK. You don't need to test this because what you can do is actually go to Windows now, Open Variables. I'm just going to drag that over here so we can see it next to the picture. And it's got a list of all the things that we wanted to have open. You see all these little icons to say if it's uh, visible or not visible. OK. And it's got all the different names included. Now if I just basically go through this, you'll notice everything changes accordingly. OK. Some of these disappear, some reappear. That's got no title. I don't know how to make this disappear, but it's the title I can change. OK. You also notice with space duck it's got no tile. And one thing you'll do notice as well is if I go through this again, some of them have issues with the spacing where it appears. So I'm going to just move that over to there so it fits. And just to make it look OK design-wise, I'm going to do that as well. And also you'll notice uh, some of these here, like that one for instance, which is the longest one, don't look very nice. So we're going to have to move that over so it appears as well. And just make it a little bit smaller, I think, just to... Whatever you do to one, it's going to appear on all of them. So I'm going to centre that as well. Because we want the text to actually appear smack in the centre of this box. I'm just going to line the top of it to the top of that box. OK, so it all looks nice. Now if I go through these, uh, that will appear in the centre and those will appear exactly where they should be. Everything's working exactly as it should be. OK. So we're happy now. That's fine. What we're going to do now is to move on to the next stage of the actual uh, process, which is to show you how to colorize certain features of this. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can figure a way to make this disappear, the picture disappear, because the word disappears as well. OK, so that'll be in section three. OK, so here we are again. We've got the template. Uh, we've all got to do now is to make it so we can change the colours. But you remember I had this problem with, if you watch this, the uh, image disappears now. And I found a quick and easy way of doing it. It's nothing to do with variables, unfortunately. It's just to do with a little trick with uh, images. All I did is basically take one of the pictures, the one that would, would have been there, made a, a transparent PNG, so basically it's an image that's exactly the same size but no colour or information in it, saved it out, called it blank, and used that as a replacement inside the actual uh, database sheet. So when it gets to one that doesn't have uh, three images, it basically puts a blank image there instead, and obviously if the background has shapes, patterns or anything, it would still look like uh, it's nothing there. Uh, so that's a workaround for that. Uh, I'll have to check because you're not allowed to have two variables set with the same name. Unfortunately, that's, if you know anything about programming, that's obvious because you know you don't know which variable to put the actual uh, value into. So anyway, what we're going to do now is take this information we've got and make it so we can colorize the parts that I've mentioned in the front of the video. The way we're going to do that is use uh, two other scripts that I found or were part of those uh, tutorials that I've used as reference and I'm going to show you how to do it. Now the important thing now is to set this up so it actually allows you to do this and what we need to do is to actually open the attributes window. Now I've already done this so I'm not going to spend time doing it all uh, as it should be uh, but basically if I click on any of the things that I want to colour You'll notice here, I've given it an attribute. Click on the next one, it has another attribute. Click on this one, it has another attribute, okay, and so forth. So they all have attributes, including the background, okay. And these are going to become apparent in a minute when I'll show you how to do the database sheet. So I'll keep this open, stick it there. And we're going to move over to the Google Sheets now. I've already prepared this. This is a spreadsheet that has certain features that have to be 
apply to. You can't change any of these uh, because it's part of the script and how the script reads the information. What you have to do is have in the in the header bar, which is the first column, I mean the first row, you have to have target note written without an underscore as it's written there, source text name as it's written there, method and parameter. Okay. Now target note is the thing that I just showed you inside the illustrator where it has the little uh, attribute. So whatever you call it, you need to place that here. Okay. All the way down there. If you notice the background, I'll go back quickly to click on the background. It says background, background. Okay. Now here, these are the names you want to have uh, the actual um, objects. Uh, it's a bit hard to understand, but these aren't the actual objects you're going to see in the actual uh, list here. They'll come in later. So what we're going to need to do is actually understand how these work. And I'll show you that once we've imported it. OK, but then what we have here is the, the method is going to apply color and the color it's going to do on these first two uh, is going to be stroke. OK, so if you go looking at so this one and this one are both lined objects and no fill, so they're going to stroke the color onto them. OK, uh, the next one's all the way down. I'm just going to change the fill color. OK, once you've uh, populated all that, OK, it's important to know you've got to check that these uh, source text names don't apply or correlate to anything that's inside the actual uh, list of objects inside your thing. OK, I'll explain that later. Now we're going to save that out as a CSV file. I'll just download straight away. OK. Now what this is going to do is give me this option to now use this script here, the create command layer script. OK, what I need to do is this is where it is, the colorized data set. All right. Now you'll see it's got all the stuff in I just said. Open it. Press yes. And you'll notice this appears. And also, if you look on your layers palette, you've got two layers here. And I'm going to open those up. And these have got all the attributes you have, which you put inside the uh, spreadsheet. Now, what I'm going to do to make life a lot easier is I'm just going to drag these over so you can see them. Like so. Okay. Just. Do that. When you actually finally do this, you want to put these over top of the image and, uh, and make them invisible because if you keep them outside, there may be a chance that when you save it out, it may uh, include those into the size of your image. So you don't want to do that. OK, so anyway, I'm just going to do one additional thing so you can see them better and that's to actually make them white. OK. So this is all the information it's going to be working from. And if you see text border, it's different to what it's actually called. It's actually called border box. OK, that's got border box without an underscore. And this is called border box with an underscore. So there's no different. There's a difference in the actual uh, titling, even though it's the same thing. OK, and it's got border line. OK, which is the actual name inside there. OK, so as long as all those match up, so the things you've done and if you long as long as you take your time it will do uh, everything's going to work fine okay now what we've got to do is to add this information to our data spreadsheet and if you remember this is the one with all the information about the what the animal is the way the image is and all this kind of stuff the description i've already populated this so after we get to the end of uh, logo 5 you'll see this new section that's been pasted in so you've got border box, divide line, 
image name, blah, 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 all the way along. And these all have a uh, hexadecimal color code. Basically, if you notice, all these are exactly the same until it gets to here, which is white. And then it's the same color again. This all represents the actual color. If you look here, this kind of color. These are all kind of basically relating to that. So everything that I want to change the color of will change the same color as the color in the picture. So it kind of matches and blends and everything. The, ones, the reason these are white is because my logo and this text need to be white against certain colors because it will make it stand out better. Okay, so once you put all this in, then we need to just basically re-import that. Uh, you need to make sure as well, I noticed in numbers, if you have an extra column, it's going to see these as blank spaces, so it's going to be uh, creating errors. So you need to make sure you delete that so everything is tidy down the edge if you're using numbers. That's the only thing I've noticed. Okay, that's one point. So what we're going to do is bring this in, and I'll show you how it all works. Again, we just simply go to scripts, import variables, find the data sheet, which is that one. So open okay I sorry I didn't <laughs> cancel that I forgot to save this All right so let's go to export okay now let's go here scripts very import data set Okay, now it's got all the extra elements. You notice it's all text because what it's going to do is where it says here, it's going to put the number in that we've talked about, the image, you know, the color number, it's going to fill into there. Okay, so we'll just go through the options thing like we did originally as well. So we're just going to put animal behavior, which is the name of my series, uh, do an underscore and then do the image name. Right, so we can test that it's fine it's exactly the same as it was before the file path which is where the images are we can show the log there nothing missing okay and then just import the variables it's going to say that there's already some in there we need to say yes because we want to go over it even though it's the same data and as soon as you do that you'll notice you get a whole lot of new uh, data appearing one thing you will notice though is all these things where it said text has changed to different numbers. Okay. And what we can do is just scroll through and you notice those numbers change because they're related to each individual uh, page of the template. Okay. The variable sets. Now, what we need to do is now you notice that none of the colors have changed at all. Okay. So what you need to do now is basically make those recolor the page. Okay, so the way you would do this is just simply use the last script we were talking about. So you go to scripts, recolor, as soon as you press recolor, boom, everything changes to the color you want. Now it doesn't hold that, it doesn't do it automatically for all of them, it only does it for the actual template you're on. So if I go to the next one, you notice the background color changes the same, all that. So you would have to literally do that every time okay and it changes the colors accordingly for each one i think that's quite smart quite useful final part i'm just going to show you how to basically create an action to save all those out so everything's got the color and everything okay okay so what we're going to do is just show you how to get this exported out uh, into the format you want now I've moved these over to here and made them black. You can't have them invisible, like I said, because it basically nullifies the actual uh, object. I don't know why, because it goes outside, I suppose. So you just have to move them off the uh, side of your uh, board and then uh, render each one out as an Illustrator file. Okay. The way we do this is we cause an action. If you don't know where the action palette is, or it's not in this little panel here, it's under Windows action okay now i've already created one uh i'm just going to close that show you how it's done but i'm going to remake it so you can understand how it works 
simply all I'm going to do is just uh, click on Rob. This is uh, that sound says Rob. I'm going to call it Save Out Two. Just start recording. Now the important thing is we need to do this uh, recoloring and then save it out. Now unfortunately there's no way of actually doing it because if I go to that script do recolor it recolors it but it doesn't save it in the actual actions so the way we can actually put that into the actions is quite simple we just go to this little menu item here you know it says insert menu item a little panel will appear you don't need to actually do anything on the panel just go to file script find the script you want let go and you notice it fills it in press ok and it fills it into there now what we're going to do is save this out I'm going to do it as an illustrator file. I'm just going to simply call it uh, template. It doesn't matter what it's called because uh, it's going to get renamed in the action anyway. Okay, so I'm going to press save. Okay, all right, and that's all we need to do. So just press stop on that. Now what we've got to do is process them all. And the way we do that is if you go to this menu item again, right at the bottom, it says batch. Okay, now I've got that set up. Before I start, you need to make sure when you're doing this, if you have a folder start off, you can choose a destination folder. Make sure you choose where you want to save it. This is basically the folder I'm already in. Okay, and make sure this is clicked on save option, so it's got a tick there. Once you do that, you'll notice if you choose data set, which is what you want, that uh, basically nullifies itself there. Okay. So we just need data set set there and uh, data set name, which is the thing we chose to call it inside the variables options. Press OK. And you'll notice it will go through the go through the panels, recoloring them and, and then resaving them. OK. That's it. All ten. All right, now if I open up uh, my finder, go to the data set, there you'll notice we have them all saved out, all the colors changed to the ones we wanted. Okay, that's quite neat, I think. All right, so that's basically the whole process. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the understanding. If not, then... Uh, put a comment or something if I've done something wrong or you didn't understand something and I can answer you back uh, or just read those articles that I've uh, linked in the description okay that's it thank you for watching the video and please consider subscribing to my channel and also press the notification bell so you're aware of when a new video has been uploaded if you like the video consider pressing the thumbs up icon as well as possibly leaving a comment to tell me what you think. Also consider sharing the video on these sites, as well as follow me on these social media channels. Thank you again for watching.